ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ದಿನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಪ್ರೀತಿಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಸಂಕ್ರಾಂತಿಯ ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳು ಎಳ್ಳು ಬೆಲ್ಲ ತಿಂದು ಇನ್ನೂ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಮಾತಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತ ಬಹಳ ಸಂತೋಷ ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಇರುವಂತವರು ಆದರಣೀಯರಾಗಿರುವಂತ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಅವರು ನಂಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರುವಂತ ಅನೇಕರು ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಹೆಸರನ್ನು ಕೇಳಿರ್ತೀರಿ ಕೆಲವರು ಈ ಕಾರಣದಿಂದಾಗಿ ಕೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀರಿ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಇವತ್ತು ಬರೀ ಒಂದು ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯಾಗಿ ನಿಂತಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಕ್ಲೀಶ ಎನ್ನಿಸ್ಬೋದು ಅದರ ಸತ್ಯ ಹೌದು ಒಂದು ಶಕ್ತಿಯಾಗಿ ನಿಂತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ನನಗೂ ಅವರು ಪಕ್ಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಬಹಳ ರೋಮಾಂಚನ ಅನಿಸಿತ್ತು ಯಾಕೆ ಗೊತ್ತೇನು ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಅನ್ನೋ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಏಕಾಂಗಿಯಾಗಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಜಗತ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮವನ್ನು ಯಾರ್ಯಾರು ಅವಹೇಳನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಂತಿದ್ದಾರೋ ಅವರನ್ನ ಲೆವೆಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅದೇ ಎತ್ತಿ ನಿಂತುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾನು ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವೇನು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಡಿ ನಾವು ಇನ್ನೂ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಯಾವಾಗ ಒಂದು ಕಲ್ಪನೆ ಇದೆ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ವಾದದ ಒಂದು ಶೈಲಿ ಇತ್ತು ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಹಿಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ಯಾರು ವಾದ ಮಾಡಬೇಕೋ ಯಾರು ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಹಳಿಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಬೈಬೇಕು ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ವಾದದ ಶೈಲಿ ಇತ್ತು ಒಂದು ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಹಿಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ಯಾರು ಸಮರ್ಪಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕೋ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡಿ ಆ ಅಧ್ಯಯನಕ್ಕೆ ಸೂಕ್ತವಾದ ಉತ್ತರಗಳನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಖಂಡಿಸಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಸೋತಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ದುರ್ದೈವದ ಸಂಗತಿ ಇದನ್ನ ಇದನ್ನ ಬುದ್ಧ ಮತ್ತು ಶಂಕರ ನಡುವೆ ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅದೊಂದು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪರಂಪರೆ ನಡೆದು ಹೋಯ್ತು ಆ ನಂತರದ ದಿನಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ದಯಾನಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿಯವರು ತುಂಬಾ ಸಮರ್ಥವಾಗಿ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷವನ್ನು ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಮರ್ಥವಾದ ಉತ್ತರವನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಎಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ಜೋರು ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿ ಫುಲ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಲ್ಲದೆ ಆ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಟಿ ಜಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಡಿ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲವು ಮಠದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ರು ಕುವೆಂಪು ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ದಯಾನಂದರ ನಂತರ ಈ ತರದ ವಾದವನ್ನು ಮಂಡಿಸಬಲ್ಲಂತವರು ಈ ಧರ್ಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿ ಈ ಧರ್ಮ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿ ಸಾಬೀತು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಲ್ಲದೆ ಅನೇಕ ಮಿಷನರಿಗಳು ಇವತ್ತು ಪತರಗುಟ್ಟುವಂತಾಗಿದೆ ಮಿತ್ರರೇ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿ ಮಿಷನರಿಗಳು ಎಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೂ ಬಂದು ಹೋಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಕೆಲವು ಬುದ್ಧಿವಂತರು ಅಂತ ಅನಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡವರು ಅವರು ತಮ್ಮ ಪುಸ್ತಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಆಂದೋಲನ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ನೋಡಿ ಎರಡು ಕಡೆ ಕೋಟ್ ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮೋಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇವರು ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಇಳಬಹುದು ಇಳಿಬಹುದು ಅಂತ ಲೆಕ್ಕ ಹಾಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಅವರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಬರೀ ದೇಶ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಡೀ ಜಗತ್ತಿನ ಜನ ನಿಂತುಕೊಂಡು ನಿಮ್ ಜೊತೆ ನಾವು ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಬರ್ತಿದೆ ಯುವ ಬ್ರಿಗೇಡ್ಗೆ ಈ ವಿಚಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಹಳ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಒಂದನೇದು ಎರಡನೇದು ಅವರ ಈ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಅಂತ ಏನ್ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಇದೆ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಈ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಓದಲೇಬೇಕಾಗಿರೋ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಅವ್ರದೊಂದು ವಾದ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನೀವು ಯಾವುದೇ ಜಗತ್ತಿನ ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಸೆಮಿನಾರ್ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡೋದು ಯಾರು ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲೋ ಅವನೇ ಮಾತಾಡೋದು ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ವೋ ಅವನೇ ಮಾತನಾಡೋದು ಅವ್ರದೊಂದು ವಾದ ಇದೆ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಗೊತ್ತೋ ಅವನೇ ಮಾತನಾಡಬೇಕು ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮ ಗೊತ್ತೋ
ಆ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಇಡೀ ಜಗತ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮೊದಲು ಅನಾವರಣಗೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತಿರೋದು ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೊದಲು ಮಾರಾಟಕ್ಕೆ ಲಭ್ಯ ಇರೋದು ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಂತ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ಸಂಗತಿಯೇ ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನ ಜೀವಮಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಮರಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತವನ್ನು ಉಳಿಸುವಂತಹ ಹೋರಾಟ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತದ ಆಧಾರದ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೊಸ ಭಾರತವನ್ನು ಕಟ್ಟುವಂತಹ ಹೋರಾಟಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ ನಾವು ವೇದಿಕೆಯಾಗಿ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣಗೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಬಹುಶಃ ಭಗವಂತ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರುವಂತಹ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಅಂತ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಿಂದ ಭಾವಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಇವತ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರ ಮಗು ಸ್ಕೂಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮದ ಕುರಿತಂತೆ ಏನೋ ತಪ್ತಪ್ಪ ಸಂಗತಿ ಕಲ್ತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದಿತ್ತಂತೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನೋಡಿದ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಹಿಂಗಿಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಆ ಸ್ಕೂಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅನ್ನು ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಇರೋದೇ ಹಿಂಗೆ ಅಂದ್ರಂತೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅವ್ರು ಲೈಬ್ರರಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರೋದೆಲ್ಲ ಇಂತಹ ಹವೆ ಅವಹೇಳನಕಾರಿ ಸಂಗತಿಗಳೇ ಆಗ ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ತಮ್ಮ ಇಡೀ ಜೀವನವನ್ನು ಇದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಮುಡಿಪಾಗಿಟ್ಟು ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಒಂದು ಅದ್ಭುತವಾದ ಶಕ್ತಿಯಾಗಿ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯರಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ನಿಂತಿರುವಂಥವ್ರು ಇವತ್ತು ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಇದೆ ಅವ್ರು ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ಥರದ ಅನೇಕ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯರಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಗಾಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಿರ್ತೀವಿ ಆದರೆ ಇವರು ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಸಂಬದ್ಧವಾಗಿ ಇದನ್ನು ಬಳಸಿಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ನಾನು ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ತಮಾಷೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರ್ತೀನಿ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಥರದವರು ಗೋಮುಖದಲ್ಲಿ ಹರಿಯುವಂಥ ಗಂಗೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಮನೆಗೆ ಬರುವಂಥ ಮುನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ಟಿ ನಲ್ಲಿಗಳು ಅಂತ ಎರಡೂ ಬೇಕು ಯಾರನ್ನು ಬೇಡ ಅನ್ನೋಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಗೋಮುಖದಲ್ಲಿ ನಲ್ಲಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಗ ಗೋಮುಖದಲ್ಲಿ ಗಂಗೆ ಹರಿದ್ರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಮನೆಯವರೆಗೂ ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೀರು ಬರಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಆದರೆ ಗೋಮುಖದ ಗಂಗೆಗಿರೋ ಪಾವಿತ್ರ್ಯ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಹಂಗೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬರಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಡೈಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಗಾದರೂ ಮನೆಗೆ ಕುಡಿಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನೀರು ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಈ ಎರಡರ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ಚರ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋಂಥ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ನಮ್ದೇನಿತ್ತು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ವೇದಿಕೆಯಾಗಿ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಆಗಿದೆ ನನ್ನ ನೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಮಿತ್ರ ನೀವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರನ ನಾವು ನೀವು ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಚಪ್ಪಾಳೆಯ ಮೂಲಕ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸೋಣ ಅಂತ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ವಿನಂತಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀನಿ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಬಹಳ ಸರಳ ಇನ್ಯಾರು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮಧ್ಯ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ಯಾರು ಮಾತು ಆಡಲ್ಲ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಅವರು ಈಗ ಉದ್ಘಾಟನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಉದ್ಘಾಟನೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಹೆಂಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವೀಗ ದೀಪವನ್ನ ಬೆಳಗಿಸಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅವರು ಬೆಳಗಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಆ ದೀಪಕ್ಕೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆ ಹಾಕಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಲ್ಪನೆ ಇರೋದು ಆ ದೀಪಕ್ಕೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆಯನ್ನ ಹಾಕಿ ಯಾಕೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆಯನ್ನು ಹಾಕಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ದೀಪ ಈ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವತ್ತೂ ಆರಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ದೀಪ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಉರಿತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾವು ಎಣ್ಣೆ ಹಾಕೋ ಕೆಲಸ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಆಗಾಗ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಈ ದೀಪ ಇನ್ನೂ ಉರಿತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಉರಿಯೋ ದೀಪವನ್ನು ನಂದಿಸದಂತೆ ನೋಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವಂತ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಯತ್ನವನ್ನ ನಾವು ನೀವು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೊಸದೊಂದು ಪ್ರಯೋಗವನ್ನು ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ದೀಪ ಬೆಳಗಿಸಲ್ಲ ಈ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ದೇಶದ ಈ ಧರ್ಮದ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತದ ಈ ಚಿಂತನೆಯ ದೀಪ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಉರಿತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ತರದವರು ಆಗಾಗ ಬಂದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆ ಹಾಕಿದ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ಅನ್ನೋಂತ ಒಂದು ಪುಟ್ಟ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನವನ್ನು ಇವತ್ತಿಂದ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರು ಬೆಳಗಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ದೀಪವನ್ನು ಬೆಳಗಿಸಿದ ನಂತರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಮಾತನಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರುಂಟು ನೀವುಂಟು ಮಧ್ಯ ನಾವು ತಲೆ ಹಾಕಲ್ಲ ಮುಗಿದ ನಂತರ ಒಂದು ಹತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ಅಗತ್ಯ ಅನಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ಮಾತಿನ ಮೇಲೆ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅದಾದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೋತ್ತರದ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೋತ್ತರವು ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ತುಂಬ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಲೈನ್ ನಿಂತ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅವ್ರು ಬಂದು ಮೈಕ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಸರಳವಾಗಿದ್ದು ನೇನ್ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಷ್ಟನ್ನು ಮಾತ್ರ ಕೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ತಯಾರಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ನೀವು ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್
there were so many attempts to block this book ban this book prevent it from coming so many petitions asking the publishers to ban my books because i discussed what i'm writing in the thailand sanskrit congress then in delhi university then in goa and so people who feel scared of what i'm saying because i'm critical of their views decided that intellectual freedom only works for them it should not work for me so they petitioned and many of you helped me fight that yes so the petitioners came up first they came up with all these allegations that didn't work then they came up with another allegation that didn't work then they set up a petition asking the publishers to withdraw my my books and they got 250 signatures of intellectuals and who are leftist marxist this kind of people and then my supporters put another petition my side counter petition that books should come out and we got 11000 signatures okay. but they did not stop they were embarrassed then they quietly started lobbying the publisher privately putting pressure and so all this went on from july last year till printer manipal press in karnataka printing this book i got a call in florida i was on a little holiday because after 3 years first time i had time i said okay i'll go for a holiday for one week but after 3 days middle of the night i get a call from india printing has been stopped because of some protest somebody wrote letter some threat that this can happen that can happen so they stopped the printing i had to fly back from my holiday to respond not to respond i needed help so two young hindus in princeton worked 14 hours at a stretch to help me put all these facts together i told them what to do what to do like that and so we responded and then more allegations and uh, threat and all that so i had to risk keep responding after 2 3 weeks of that then the book came back into the press so this is why i stopped discussing it in public because i thought every time i say something they twist it to stop my book so i will wait until we have several thousand copies printed so the mere fact that we have the book available means we have won the first battle of sanskrit already and i thank all the supporters who helped make this happen because what the other side realized is that you cannot silence us because we have the support of the public at the grassroots they have support of the big media big all the big tv and some big newspapers because they're all part of the pseudo left kind of people so what i will talk about in this book there are three way three parts first is what is the kurukshetra where sanskrit studies indology our history our itihas our philosophy all the sanskrit texts these things are studied internationally and this kurukshetra is controlled by the west even today even though we say we are not colonial colonized but in the study of our own civilization we are still following what they tell us our own intellectuals are following i want to talk about that that's large part of what i'll say second part is what are the specific examples of major problems in the western study of our culture of our sanskriti what are the big issues 
There are big issues in the way they study Ramayana, the way they study Vedas, the way they study history of Sanskrit, the way they depict the grammar of Sanskrit, all kind of distortions. So I, that is a big topic. Half of this book is on that. Examples of very specific things in major chapters, which are serious issues and they affect our identity, they affect our unity, they affect our dharma, they are not sort of simple technical issues. And the third area is what do we do? What, what's our strategy? These are the three things. Now the first, the description of the Kurukshetra. I want to start by explaining that traditionally at the time of Shankara and before that and even after that for a few centuries, one of the strongest things we had was the Purvapaksh system of studying the other. When you study the other, you know the other thinking, you are not, he cannot confuse you. He cannot make a fool out of you because you understand him. You can connect the dots and you so see the big picture. Everything he's doing, you know what it means. What he's saying, but what it means. That is what Purva Paksh teaches you. And then you can give Uttar Paksh, you can respond. You cannot give Uttar Paksh, you should not give Uttar Paksh without first doing Purva Paksh. So, we all know that was a great system. Why is there no Purva Paksh now? Today, when I ask traditional scholars, why have you not done a Purva Paksh of these Western Indologies that I am doing? They don't have an answer. They haven't done it. Why was there no Purva Paksh of early Christianity when Christianity came? Of Islam when Islam came? No Purva Paksh. Of Marxism, of you know, postmodernism. Western feminism, all kind of stuff. Why no Purva Paksh? Purv, it is not enough to say we dismiss them, we get angry at them, or we ignore them, or we join them. That is not Purva Paksh. Purva Paksh means that without getting angry, without dismissing them, in a very respectful way, in a very intellectual way, you explain what are they saying, what is their logic, and what is our response. You have to do it like that. Now, when the, Christ, the Syrian Christians came in 4th century, there was no Purpaksh done that we know of. So, a thousand, so we did not understand Christianity because we never did Purpaksh. We just thought they are some regular people. So when they, but a thousand years later, when the Portuguese came, we, did, we could not understand how to deal with them, what is their mentality, what is their politics, who do they work for, what are they trying to do. We did not understand it. In fact, some of you may know this or not know this, but the admiral of the Vijayanagar Empire fleet on the Malabar coast invited the Portuguese naval head invited him as a friend to help him fight another Indian. We didn't understand what we are getting into. This is the beginning of the Portuguese takeover because we did not understand Christianity. And, and of course, once the Portuguese established, then many other Europeans started coming. That was the beginning of the colonial period with the Portuguese arrival. Portuguese arrival was done by our people facilitating. In fact, when Vasco da Gama came, they did not know how to go around Africa to reach India. They, Europeans had no knowledge. So Columbus was sent across the Pacific to reach India and Vasco da Gama went around Africa to reach India. And he, Vasco da Gama hired a Gujarati sailor to be the captain and navigate and show him the way. We brought these guys in. We had not done enough poor on them. Then when Islam came, they came to Sindh in the 8th century. Even though 
we were superior militarily to the Arabs. We were superior financially. We were certainly superior intellectually. We did not do a total poor function. Who are these people? We didn't send our scholars there to study them and come back. Like they were doing poor function us. We were too arrogant, too complacent, too confident, dismissive. So what happened is, even though India had a lot of trade contact with Arabs, trade, we were not studying their ideology. We were not understanding their mindset, mentality, their psychology. The poor Paksh requires. So this caused a lot of confusion about Islam. And from 8th century, it is six, five, six hundred years later that the Mughal Empire is, comes to Delhi, settle down. So from Sindh to Mughal Empire, it's several centuries. We, are, we don't have, we don't know intellectually who these guys are. We just know they come on horses, they're bad, they're cruel, they do this, they do that, they fight, we fight them. But there's no overall strategy telling us, you know, what is their capability, how many of them are there, who's Turk and who's Arab and who's Persian, are they fighting each other, can we exploit that? We just didn't have that. We were not bothered. Then more recently, when the East India Company comes, we think they're a bunch of traders. We just don't understand more than that because we never bothered. But if you look at the East India Company records in London, all the time they have these strategies. They're developing these strategies. They're debating them in the British Parliament very openly. But we are just sitting there until something happens to us. Until Gandhi published a thing called Hindu Swaraj around 1906, 1909, little book, which is his Purva Paksha of the British rule. Very late, very late from the time they came, in 1900 and something. Until then, we really had not done a real thorough analysis or a strong analysis of them. In fact, Ram Mohan Roy was working for them almost. He's converted to pseudo-Christianity, he's sort of uh, thinking along their lines. It's people like Vivekanand, people like Gandhi, uh, who then started uh, re returning the gaze, looking at them from our point of view. So we've had very late responses on ideology and very uh, incomplete. Now, Shankara in the 9th century does thorough Purv Bhaksha, Abhinav Gupta in the 10th century, Ramanuja in the, uh, in the 12th century, Madhava in the 14th century. By then, Christianity is solid, Islam is solid, but in their Purv Bhaksha, they ignore Purv Bhaksha of Islam and Christianity. Why? We, we should have been teaching our people about that all the time. What I am doing in being different and these kind of books, they should have been doing it all along. But there was some reason that they hesitate to do poor paksha of the foreigners. They only do poor paksha of each other. This is a very interesting uh, thing. According to one account, the British fought 111 wars using Indian soldiers. Please note this, British fought 111 different wars in India and Africa and here and there, China, various places, using Indian soldiers as the 90%, 95% of their soldiers. It was easy for them to recruit Indians, very easy for Indians to go work for them. But in China, when the British had a brief period of occupation, they failed to raise even one regiment of Chinese soldiers. Look at the difference. In India, they could raise lakhs of people who would, for the right salary, work for them. And in China, they failed to raise even one regiment of Chinese soldiers who would work under the British command. Difference. Why is it that we are so easily sold out? And we, had, we are not able to cognize the other. We, can, we just don't understand it. So, what is the reason for failure to do Purva Paksha in the, in, in the Hindu psychology? I'll give you some possible answers, I don't know, but these are some possible answers. One is that the 
there are certain people who are I, I would call it micro optimized I only think of myself myself mine my family a very narrow view why should I care about anything else uh, so individual and small scale optimization and completely abandoning the big collective interest that's a t tendency we've had another is certain philosophies certain interpretations of Vedant have made certain people world negating which means the world is mithya, the world is maya anyway, so why does it matter, who cares, this sort of an attitude. I have, I come across this through a lot of these pseudo Vedantins. There's one famous fellow who owns billions of dollars of industry and he was giving this kind of lecture, it's all. Every time I said we ought to do this, he would say it's all mithya and maya anyway. So I said, you know, tomorrow you take the shares of your company, bring it, and change your name and put my name and give it to me. <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. I said, but it is all Mithya and Maya anyway. <laughs> then another guy, a doctor, he was talking like this. So I said, it's like saying that if you're supposed to give 10, ml, 10, 10 ml injection, you can give 1,000. It is, it is just a couple of shunyas at the end. How, how does it matter? So he said, but you know, it could kill the patient. I said, but whether he's dead or alive, it's only Mithya. <laughs> And he said, but I could go to jail. I said, whether you're in the jail or out of jail is only Mithya. <laughs> the point I'm making is, when it is their selfish interest, they know the difference of Vevarik. And they're not giving you some lofty, pramarthic logic for the Vevarik. We have to live Vevarik also. But when it is a time to sacrifice for something big, something beyond selfish, then they give you this logic of Advait. So suddenly there is this Advait mode, when it is time to take action for other people, for resp responsibility over Samaj or something. And then there is the other switch called, no, 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 I'm very practical guy, Vivarik level. So this is the pseudo Vedantin problem, which also has prevented our intellectuals from doing serious Purva Paksha. Now, there is this political correctness that everything is same, all religions are the same, which I criticize quite a lot. And that also has prevented us from a solid uh, tradition of Purv Paksha of these different faiths that are attacking us all the time. And then there are people who are very bombastic. We are so great. We have been great for 5,000 years. Nothing can happen. Arrogance. And I tell them that forget 5,000 years, even 2,000 years ago, we were five times the size. Because we were from Afghanistan to Bali and from Mount Kailash to Sri Lanka. Five times the area. And now, even the area we have could be under threat for, with, for further partitions. So if we are shrinking, 80% gone already, and still under threat, how can you say, oh, are we are this great, this shlok, and we are the devatas, protect us. It's sort of abrogation, abandonment of responsibility. This is a very common problem we have. Then glorifying the past as though that glorified era solves our problem today. This is another escape mechanism. Then there are people who sort of blame the other side. You cannot say it is the fault of the bowlers who, who can uh, make our batsmen out. It is not their fault. The bowlers are doing their job. The bowlers who get us out are doing their job for their team. We have to upgrade the, our batting. We have to upgrade